Tonight, live from the Inspire Theater in the heart of fabulous downtown Las Vegas, we present the Downtown Podcast. Starring your hosts, Dylan Jorgensen, Louisa B., Jason Outlaw, and music by yours truly, DJ Lenny Alfonso. Tonight's guest, Hollywood producer, Benny Richburg Jr. From Not Just Antique Smart, Renee and Jessica Poole. Musical performance by Jesse Pino. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's give it up for the man who rumor has it sprinkled anthrax on Trey's Doritos, Mr. Jason Outlaw. What's up, what's up, what's up, what's up, what's up? The door's still open. It's hot outside, you don't wanna, you don't wanna leave the door open. It's, it's hot in Vegas, it's hot in Vegas. How we doing, everyone doing all right? Great, 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 great. Yes, yes, yes. Good stuff, man. We got a really exciting show for you guys. A lot of cool things have happened this week. Uh, so uh, it's official uh, that, uh, that gays can marry. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. The, the Supreme Court uh, passed a, a bill saying that, that gays can marry. So it's pretty awesome. We're pretty excited. Um, actually, uh, no, I can't believe they did this to us, said a guy that doesn't want to give up half his stuff. <laughs> uh, it has been reported that Kim and Kanye uh, have had in vitro, and they're using medical means to have the, uh, the sex of their kid made into a boy. That's right. So uh, while they're at it, can they choose their kid's personality? I don't know. I don't know. And actually, I believe the process goes something like this. The, uh, the, the doctor goes in and it says, it says uh, the doctor says, hey, uh, I'm going to let you finish, but first I just want you to know you're going to be a boy. Uh, there's a prank video that has recently went viral with Paris Hilton uh, faking uh, a horror in a uh, plane crash. She's like screaming and yelling, only if she was faking her sex tape. Hmm. Actually, uh, I don't know if she was. Let's go to the tape. No, just joking. <laughs> that guy was really excited. He's like, yeah. Uh, Trojan has come out with a new condom that changes color when you're exposed to an STD. Nice. Yes. Just as long as I know I've been exposed, that's good enough for me, said no one ever. <laughs> Yes, yes. I mean, you know, and, and here's the thing about STDs, like, you know, girls have that little thing, you know, it's like a, a, you know, they paint their nail and they can stick it in their drink and it tells them if it's, if it's a date rape drug and stuff like that. You know, why, why can't we get that for guys? We're just like poking, you're like, ah, oh, STD. <laughs> I mean, I think that'd be fair awesome. enough, fair, fair enough, enough, right? Yeah. I think that'd be so cool. You'd be like, yep, you're like, you're like not exposed. Bam. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Paul Rudd is in the news because he farted multiple times during an interview for his highly anticipated movie, Ant-Man. Yes, yes. He was attempting to clear the air. <laughs> that was just in there. I don't, know, I don't know why that was. That was just in there. But I was attempting to clear the air by saying he was working on a new superpower. Who knows? Who knows? All right, so um, after going around the country uh, talking about abstinence, Bristol Palin has announced that she is once again pregnant. Yes, indeed. Bristol Palin, harder to pull out of than the Middle East. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> all right, ladies and gentlemen, we've got an awesome show for you guys. All kinds of great things coming your way. First off, how about a big round of applause for DJ Lenny Alfonso! segment where we feature someone from right here in downtown Las Vegas. This segment is brought to you by Rachel's Kitchen located downtown at the Ogden and at the Lou Ruvo Brain Center for Health. So let's take a second and everybody put your hands together for our wonderful sponsors. All right. All right, tonight we get to meet an amazing mother-daughter duo. Please be forewarned that I might get a little fan crazy because these guests are essentially Martha Stewart mixed with a little bit of Pinterest. So, uh, Renee and Jessica Poole own the company Not Just Antique Smart that has, been, that has a shop right here in downtown Las Vegas in the Arts District. Please put your hands and get your pom-poms out for Renee and Jessica Poole. All right, how are you guys? Good. Great. How are Good. You? you guys look beautiful.
beautiful. Thank, thank you. you. You too. Oh, thank you so, so much. So are you? Thank you. Um, so, uh, as I said, I'm, I apologize in advance if I get a little too excited because I love thrift and antiques and just, yeah. So, um, but so from what I understand, 10 years ago, your business started, right? How did that happen? Was it a hobby or? No, for, for, for me. It was a hobby for me. So and it was, it was a business for me. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm an estate liquidator, which means that I go to people's homes uh, generally after they pass, and then we empty out the contents of the home. We sell everything and empty it out. And there were many times when people called me and they had small estates that I couldn't do, so we decided to open a warehouse where we would sell their items for them. Okay, cool. And then what were you doing before? I was in college, and when I got out of college, I said, holy crap, what am I going to do? And we said, let's start a store. <laughs> Does that mean everybody should start a store? Um, no. No? <laughs> no. <laughs> it's, it's, not it's not for everybody. You've definitely got to have a lot of... A lot of stamina, and it, you know, it's it's just like any other job. Ninety-five percent of the time, it's amazing, and five percent, just five percent yeah, of the time, and, you want to. And, and, and when you're in the vintage, or when you're in this business, as opposed to re regular retail, there's a lot of dickering, and there's a lot of bickering, mm -hmm. um, and people think there's there, there's an entitlement. So you know, it, it, it's a different mindset than regular retail as well. So it, it was a hobby for you. How how? I'm proof that there's <laughs> old people that live in downtown Las Vegas. You mean work? All right, so it was, it was a hobby for you. How excited were you when you got to start working with your mother every day in downtown Las Vegas on an awesome hobby? I mean, what, what an awesome experience. <laughs> no, I mean, it's really amazing and exciting to work with my mom. Um, most of the time, sometimes, you know, we're mom and daughter. And so just like any other relationship, sometimes I want to kill her. It's true, you know? Yeah. Um, I probably shouldn't have said that on. <laughs> and now I have witnesses. Um, but... Um, for the most part, we get along, and you know, she's my mother, so she thinks she's in charge regardless of what's going on. So okay. it makes it a little pull and tug relationship. When I think that would make a great reality show. Thank you, thank you. So do millions of yeah. people, right? Yeah, yeah. that's great. Yeah. <laughs> um, you won't believe the amount of um, people that have approached us for a reality show, but we've actually been told because we're women um, that they are not looking for women based reality shows right now. Boo. Well, boo. 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 Yes. Yeah. Yes. So what, what kind of items are in your store, and what are the, what's the craziest thing that's come in that you have seen? We, we get all kinds of yeah. things. Um, they've become kind of ordinary to us, but you know, at the estate sales, we, 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 we've come across sex toys. Um, we, had a, we had a kinky corner at the last estate sale. Tell me more. Yeah. <laughs> well, link, little and this, fuzzy and handcuffs. This is, okay. And this is not from young people, so. Well, yeah, and so, and some of the sex toys are, are old. <laughs> Yeah, they're, they're vintage. Do they, do they belong in the have, museum? And yeah, they're yeah, we have, yeah. We have vintage <laughs> our gloves. We have vintage massagers and things like that. Yes. Nice. It's <laughs> true. They exist. Yeah. But, so and one time, one time, we found some new ones, and I didn't know they came in all those colors. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I can't. Oh, you guys. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm turning red, I think. Oh, oh man. That's true. <laughs> but neither did I. <laughs> yeah. So um, what can we expect different from you guys, from other consignment and thrift stores? Well, we're downtown, which mm -hmm. is awesome. Um, we're a mother and daughter team. Um, we're two women that own a business that's usually, you know, usually when it's vintage and it's antiques, it's owned by men pri primarily. Um, and we take consignment and we do estate liquidation, so we have a variety of things because it's not like we're going out and we're buying it. People are actually bringing it to us. People, co people come to our store with truckloads and, and, and binfuls because grandma said, you know, to keep this forever because it's worth a fortune. And people say, you know, is it worth a fortune? <laughs> and w we tell them. So if it's worth something, we put it on the floor, and if it's not, they get it back. So. Um, every day we get binfuls and build Yeah, people literally bring in their trucks. They drop off their boxes. They, of course, get a little sheet mm -hmm. and off they go. And, you know, it's amazing the trust that people have in us. Um, you know, we've been around for 10 plus years and, and we're, we're very proud of the fact that right. people just, you know, and trust often us time, with And oftentimes grandma lied. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And what's amazing is when people do bring in those things, you know, like we have water, like we have things that Macy's carries, like Waterford and Yadros, and we have all that cool stuff, and we have signed art and all kinds of amazing pieces. But what's great is when people bring in these things that they think are worth money, and it's sad when they're not, but when they do bring in that piece or those two pieces, and they're like, oh, you know, I don't think this is worth anything. And what's wonderful is to be able to say, no, it is. This is, this is your piece. Like, this, don't throw this out, because mm -hmm. this is your money. 
Okay, and we can find you here downtown in Las Vegas yes. uh -huh. at a 1422 Western 1422 Avenue. 1422 Western Avenue okay. near Oki. Near Oki, okay, and also www.notjustandkeeksmarts. Not Dot com. Dot com. That's yes. right. All right, cool. Well, yep. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank, thank you. For you. I'm turning us. a little red. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So up next, we have Dylan Jorgensen, who will be talking with Hollywood heavyweight Benny Richberg. Stay tuned. You're not going to want to miss this. The internet, the world's most amazing tool to stare at adorable cats, like all day. But it doesn't have to be that way, really. Tracky helps you connect, collaborate, and get stuff done. It's a social way to organize your personal and professional life. Inspire the people you work with. And inspire yourself to enjoy more of life's little things. And when the work is done, Tracky helps you plan, and play. Gather your friends, have some fun, and make sure your plans are awesome. Fun, easy. Nobody needs to worry about bears this time around. A long day and a fun night deserve the thwack of a high five. Welcome to Tracky, the tool where everything and everyone in your life works together in harmony. Connect, collaborate, done. Well, up to us, let's make some noise! Uh, welcome back. You guys, uh, you're gonna love our next guest. So our next guest has a long history of producing TV in Hollywood. His credits include Martin, The Jamie Foxx Show, and The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Oh, yeah. that, still, that still rings a bell with people. So today he's here to talk to us about both the future of entertainment and technology and the ways that L.A. relates to Las Vegas and how that's going to grow over the next 10 years. So please put your hands together for Benny Richburg. Come on out, Benny. Oh, he got the... Dylan? <laughs> Are you singing that song yeah. or do you still love it? Oh yeah, no, I love that song. It's the right. beginning. Yeah, the songs take you back, they yeah, transport yeah. you. Yeah, did that Rich Burton name fill you guys <laughs> Um Okay, uh, anyways, so yeah, tra talking about transporting back, like, will you start by explaining sort of your history between Las Vegas and LA so we can have this conversation about how they might grow together? Oh, why I love Vegas and... Yeah, well, especially like you've lived in both places. Like, right. I'm curious, like, how you think entertainment is different in the two and how it might grow together. Well, I have an interesting quick story. I, I, I actually lived in Vegas. I'd just gone through a divorce. Right. And like, I need to go hide somewhere. You know what I mean? So yeah. I was like, let me go come to Vegas. You, you know what I mean? I figured <laughs> I wanted to kind of write features and stuff like that. And, and LA is not really a spot when you're an artist and you're a writer. Like, you, ha you actually have to have your, your content and things that you want to write about before you get to LA. You know what I'm talking about? So, a, have a pitch and make Yeah, you can't happen. come up yeah. with a really good story living in LA. Right. So Vegas gave me, like, Vegas is a world where, it's, to me, it's, it's yeah, super it's, normal it's, in a weird way, you know? So this is the place where you can get real stories, real characters. Right. Write, clear your head, then go back and try to sell it. You, you know what I mean? So right, I actually... Right. I actually dug the, the year and a half, two years that I, that I lived out here, so... Right, know. the two different modes. There's yeah. two different modes. And then, back to business, when you asked me about television, it, it seemed like... You know, when, when we used to shoot sitcoms, we used to shoot sitcoms on a stage in front of a live audience. <clears throat> hey. That law, that audience kind of okay. went away. You, you know, it was like, we used oh, to shoot every right Well, our, you guys are the audience yeah. right here. Yeah. 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 They left L.A. Yeah, I they know. Came here. They left yeah. L.A. and came to yeah, came, came yeah, I know what you're saying. Yeah. But what happened was, you know, we would have to shoot a show every Friday. Right. And we had to shoot it from a live audience. So we would have to farm out to a casting person who would go and go into the streets of LA to actually try to find people to come to the show for the live shoot. When I lived here in Vegas, I was just w going around and I was just sitting there looking at the amount of tourists that was coming to Vegas just right, weekly. Right, that's true. And I just kept thinking, how wonderful would it be and how easy it would be to shoot a live show, talk show, sitcom here in Vegas because the energy from a live audience you, oh. you know, you have, yeah, it's, when that's right, yeah, they're all on the strip. The place, yeah. Hey guys, we got free alcohol, you guys want to come, you know what I mean? So I thought that, you know, where 
the, you know, the, it was drying up in LA. That's why I, I feel a lot of shows went to like no audiences. They was like, okay, forget the audience, we're just gonna shoot, you know what I mean? The bad problem with that is I don't think you get the performance out of actors mm. when there's no audience there. You, you know what I mean? I think it, when you watch shows, it feels like the whole, like some shows you aren't, they're not really as, they're not really as funny as they used to be because I feel there's no live audience. So oh, yeah, because yeah, they, they can sense that. They like, can sense it. Yeah. And a live audience keeps everything honest. Like you don't know if a joke works if it's just a cameraman. You know, they, even, right. you know, they might laugh. Jason up hey, this guy's yeah, just, yeah, they right. might fake a laugh to get out of here tonight. You know what I right. mean? But, <laughs> just hit the old play button on the laugh exactly. track and he's like, I'm done. And you're yeah. done. He's you like, know? I'm hilarious. They love me. I've never tested exactly. it. But, you know. Exactly. Exactly. But, but for a live audience, Everyone's laughing, and you guys are right. Everything works. That, that, yeah. that joke does work. So that's why when it goes to the audience at home, you have a sense of, you know what? That show's going to be funny. The audience is going to laugh about it. So yeah. that's why I'm a big fan of connecting Vegas and L.A. as far as TV production. You know, I, okay. think, it, I think it'll work really nice. So we'll get there. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. So as, as much history as you've had in TV producing, you told mm -hmm. me a story that kind of surprised me about how the youth is kind of thinking about media and entertainment in general and, like, what the future might bring. So could you just sort of... Go into that and like explain some of those stories. Well, I feel well right now everything is kind of decentralized. Like you don't have to be in LA to shoot a TV series, you know. Right. Um, and I think kids are watching everything on YouTube. Right. I mean, not so. I mean, not so much YouTube, but on their cell phones. Right. So the right. content. They're mobile devices. They're mobile tablets, devices. Yeah. So they, they. I've actually talked to a studio head who they were concerned that the control that Hollywood used to have on the media. Oh, they should be concerned. They're about to get taken apart. They're about right? to get taken apart because... They have to know their jobs. I mean, you're like, talking billions of dollars yeah. that are being funneled to someone who says, hey, I can control this. And then, no, you know, pe the kids are watching other things, you, right. you know? So I think <coughs> just because of that, we are, we are walking into a whole new world of, of content and how content is delivered what, uh, 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 you know, the, the people who are watching the content, what they like, uh, you know, is different. You can't, one studio can't control, okay, everyone's gonna like this. Like, you know, years ago, there was only three networks. Right, you know, right. so if you're home, the only thing you can watch is ABC, NBC, and CBS. Well, so, so what's your advice? Because there's downtown Vegas especially. is like a very creative arts district right. type feel. Like a lot of people create content, whether it's like their own YouTube channel or not. Mm -hmm. but, I think what can they do to you know, make a living? I, with technology, these cameras you guys have, it was I shot a reality show, a sizzle reel, on a Samsung, on on, on, a, on the, uh, the the camera itself, on a Samsung, on a oh, telephone. Oh, you're talking about the phone. The yeah, phone. Yeah, yeah. It oh, was okay, it was okay. so good. I was like, okay, we're gonna shoot a sizzle reel with this because I don't have time to go get the cameras. We're gonna shoot it with this. It says you know it had yeah, the same yeah, it, you had. know it was better than the 5D. You know, so sure, yeah. I think the 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 creating of the content. The, the technology only controls the distribution of it. Yeah. I think the one thing that people can control is how good it is. That's the, that's, that's the only reason right. why people go to L.A. Let I me mean, I mean, back up a second. It's just L.A. just has a, probably maybe a better trained actor sometimes or a trained technician because everybody goes there that are highly qualified. But once th that line is now being blurred by right. better technicians right. and, you know, so once better that software, happens, yeah. better yeah, software. Yeah. So, for example, there's no reason why with the right cameras, the right actors, I can't shoot anything here in LA, in Vegas, and it'll look like I shot it in LA. There's, right. That line is completely blur, uh, blurred now. So it's just all about the content. About it's the content. all about yeah. the content. It's Yo. all about the content. It's all about yeah. being able to deliver it. The only other thing is, yeah. is <clears throat> if you have a little bit more information on how to deliver the content. Like there's certain networks that, like the content has to look a certain way. Like it yeah. has to fit within their confines of what you know, what a show looks like, a 30 minute show, 15 minute show, and all that stuff. Once you understand what that format is, you can do it anywhere. And mm -hmm. why not do it in Vegas? What do you think about like people live streaming? Like, do you think the show never ends now? Like, is it about following a Hollywood person's life, like on their live stream, find out what they're tweeting about, like get into their life, or is it? You, you mean here? Well, yeah. I, I just think in general, is media like now like one long stream of story? I think media is, it's all over the place. It's like whatever interest you you know it's like sex yeah. it's like you know sex is just so weird yeah. you don't know what anybody's into yeah, you know they're like I mean? now you're like you don't know what people are into you know what I mean? <laughs> you know like, what I mean? foot, like, oh, sex gets dark yeah, you don't know yeah, what somebody's yeah. doing you know what I mean so it's like pinky toe sex you know you know oh. Oh, but you know it's like oh, pinky toe sex. like pinky toe yeah, sex. No, you know okay. you you might find it's someone all like in a frame now that I can <laughs> understand <Yeah. laughs> right people like pinky toe sex so I mean so you never know if you can find your audience yeah if you can find your audience 
you can do that. You have the power to do that from your yeah. home. You know, you know. So right, right, right. I'm excited about that. You, you know, okay. I, I I just think it's like a free world. It's like you know, it's like the Death Star has just de been Good destroyed. Be yeah. So it's like let's go. Everybody can just go rock. You know. Yeah, that'll be good. That'll be really good. Yeah. Okay. So tell me, what are you working on now? I mean, you've done big things in the past. Are you gonna try something new? Yeah, yeah. Um, I actually I kind of got out of comedy. I felt like the PC police kind of makes comedy kind of hard today to me, and I like I laugh at dark jokes. Yeah, you know, I laugh at yeah, yeah, yeah pinky toe that's sex. The, <laughs> the yeah, for you, that's the, <laughs> that is. Yeah. But um, so I cross. I'm, I'm moving into long form, which are drama series, action yeah, drama okay. series, things that I've always wanted to do. Uh, I'm right now working on the bio Pam Pam Greer, legendary actress Pam Greer. Um, I just adapted her autobiography to screenplay. Mm -hmm. Um, we're about to start pre-production, I hope, probably by the fall on okay. that. And, and that's, uh, I'm really excited about bringing her life story to the, to, to the big screen. Yeah, so really I'm excited cool. on that. I have her attached to a action drama series. It's like a, it's like, um, it's, it's like a, a homeland security in the Wild West. It's like crazy. Oh, okay. Kick down doors, shoot right. later, all that. Ah, you know, all that, you know, this, yeah. yeah, you know, and so. We had that, and you know, it, it's just okay. now I got to the point where, hey, let's, and I just want to produce all types of content from reality shows. I just met a, a young female who flies planes, mm -hmm. and she's she's only like 25 years old, and, and but she's a she's a star. She, she, yeah, she's yeah, like yeah. Martha Stewart of you know action and adventure. Yeah. So that's gonna be yeah, a reality yeah. show. So you know, I want to do all that no, stuff. That'd so be cool. all right, this is well, fun times right now. All right, well, I'm looking forward to seeing it on all my different devices and oh, my yeah. iPad and yeah. on my. You'll be in it, phone. Dylan. Let's go. Okay, yeah, Let's go. Know. Yeah, I'll ruin your ratings. But thank you so much for coming <laughs> out. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. That'd be good. All right, stay tuned. We're gonna be back with a singer songwriter right after this break. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. It's good. We appreciate it. Kingdom, I was finally there. I just sit on the throne as the priest. Let's go! Our next performer, uh, you can get all of his information at jessepino.com. Uh, let's give it up for singer songwriter Jesse Pino. Do 
hope you fucking burn Let it burn Let it burn Let it burn I already got you tucked away there's nothing you can say Cause I'm all gone So please believe me when I say Thank you. Good job. Jesse, thank you very much. All right, check him out at jcpino.com. Give him one round of applause, one last round of applause. Thank you. All right, and thank you. That's the end of our show for tonight. Check us out every Thursday right here on Las Vegas Boulevard and Fremont. For all of you viewers at home, come down, hang out with us. 10 o'clock p.m. on Thursday nights. We all go out as a group, come party with us, and uh, check us out on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, all that stuff, at Downtown Podcast. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Thank you.